Next, we have a report from TV Tokyo's World Business Satellite. A solar power plant in Hokota City, Ibaraki Prefecture. Two years ago, a burglary occurred here. Can you see it? The cables here were all stolen. Stolen were cables to carry electricity generated by the plant. Typically, highly conductive copper wires are used. Prices of copper have surged over the past two years because of fast-growing demand for electric vehicles requiring large amounts of the metal. In March of this year, prices reached a new high as the Ukraine crisis heightened supply worries. As a result, it's said that thefts have increased for the purpose of reselling the material. Since copper prices began climbing, we've had more thefts. The damages here are about $75,000. This company operates solar power plants in Ibaraki Prefecture and says six of its 40 locations have suffered similar burglaries. To prevent thefts, this plant has started using a new type of cable. We installed aluminum cables. Aluminum is less conductive than copper. But by bunching a larger number of the material to make a thicker cable, they say they can ensure a similar performance. Prices are also a third of copper. They believe it's less prone to being stolen due to the lower resale value. Some companies are developing new anti-theft systems. Afterfit operates solar power plants across Japan. Its president, Kanzo Tanimoto, feels a sense of crisis about the rising number of cable burglaries. Once they're stolen, the entire plant has to be shut down. So even if we generate electricity, we can't sell it. And that results in a huge loss for us. An issue for us is how to protect our vast facilities. On this day, a practical trial is being carried out. We're going to start an intruder test now. Linked to the head office in Tokyo is a solar power plant in the mountains of the northern Kanto region. A man playing a suspicious character appears. He climbs over the gate and enters the plant. Then suddenly, at the head office... We just got a call. The plant's motion sensor has been activated. OK, let's start. A man starts working on his computer. In the next instant, something is launched at the plant. A drone. They're testing the use of the plant's maintenance drone to monitor and prevent thefts. An off-the-shelf drone is equipped with a system developed by the company. When an intruder breaches the facility, it takes off automatically. At the head office, staff members can see real-time footage captured by the drone. There's a person there. That's the thief. When the intruder is spotted, the drone is operated manually. Let's issue a verbal warning. This is a prohibited area. Leave immediately. They can also issue verbal warnings. He's running. He's running. Look, he tripped. They've had an anti-theft system in place from before, but decided to strengthen their drone capabilities to thwart the rising number of cable thefts. 
Having people secure the plant 24 hours a day is quite difficult from a cost perspective. We can automatically fly drones and combining them with sensors, we can find the criminals and ensure security. So how well does it work at night? The drone experiment continues to see if an intruder can be spotted in the darkness. We know drones can be flown fully unmanned during the day, but we want to check if it's possible to ensure the necessary visibility and safety. Afterfit is currently carrying out repeated test flights to obtain government approval to implement remote nighttime drone operations, which require on-site monitoring. This is a prohibited area. The drone spots an intruder in the darkness. An infrared camera equipped on the drone clearly captures the subject. We're aiming to lower the cost so that drones can be used for security and daily monitoring.